Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. The religion of Islam is a comprehensive religion that covers every aspect of our lives. And of course, one of the things that the religion points to is the adab, the etiquettes, the mannerisms of everything that you and I may be doing in life. There are etiquettes for sleeping, there are etiquettes for talking, there are etiquettes for eating. And when it comes to the walk of Arba'in, the wonderful opportunity that many of us are blessed with, and indeed this walk of love and generosity and kindness, the walk of wilaya towards the shrine of Sayyid Shuhada Aba Abdullah al Hussein sallallahu alayhi wa Most carry out this walk from Najaf across three days, 80 kilometers approximately, but some over several weeks from cities like Basra or even from Baghdad and other places and cities. What are the etiquettes of walking? How should we present ourselves? These and the following are some recommendations that we should keep in mind whilst we undertake this wonderful journey towards the city of martyrs, towards Karbala. Number one, our intention has to be pure. We have to do this for the sake of Allah. It has to ooze with ikhlas. I must not be walking to, God forbid, show off or for any other reason other than to seek the blessings, mercy and reward from the Almighty subhanahu wa ta'ala. Number two, I should have consideration for others. I should care about the environment, about, for example, the safety and the well-being of others. I should not push, shove, be disrespectful. I should have patience if others, for example, may have had a bad day or a bad moment because they are all Zawar of Hussein alayhi salam. I should be considerate enough to facilitate anything and everything for them and make it easy for people and not, for example, throw the food on the streets or create some kind of obstacles. At the same time, I should be maintaining wudu, ritual purity, as much as possible throughout the walk. This is an act of ibadah. I'm walking towards the shrine of Imam Hussein alayhi salam for many reasons, but also the Ahl al-Bayt have recommended this and I'm gaining reward. The Malaika are praying for me. So I need to keep myself ritually pure and my clothes as much as possible should be clean as well. Similarly, I should adhere to Salah and must perform the Salah in its right time, must not ignore it and keep walking, for example. Salah is one of the, those things that Imam al-Hussein alayhi salam stopped the fighting for and he was showered with arrows whilst he was performing Salatul Khawf in the plains of Karbala on the day of Ashura. And to honor his sacrifice, my Salah must be protected. Whilst I'm walking, another recommendation and adab is to fragrance my mouth and heart, my soul with the remembrance of the Almighty, with dhikr, with istighfar, with salawat, with the recitation of verses from the Quran, with recitation of dua. This will make even my walk even more blessed, will infuse it with much more reward and grace and blessings from the Almighty subhanahu wa ta'ala. Whilst I'm walking, I should be feeling the grief of the Ahl al-Bayt Allow the tears to fall. Do not hold back from expression of sorrow and sadness. Take part in the ma'atam. Listen to a musibah. Remember the tragedy of Zainab and Sukaina and the women of the Ahl al-Bayt. Remember Zain al-Abideen. Honor what they stood for. Another recommendation is I should use it for contemplation, for thinking. This is a movement. This is a journey from one place to another, but perhaps it reflects my own journey in life. Where am I going? How can I get closer to Allah? What are the things that I could do to improve myself spiritually? How can I be of more service to others, of mankind, of humanity? How can I spread the beautiful teachings of the religion of Islam and the school of Ahl al-Bayt? This is a moment for reflection. It's a moment for contemplation. Perhaps during the walk, I should use this opportunity to serve to learn the importance of generosity and kindness to others, to help others in any way possible. Perhaps I could volunteer in a mokim or distribute something for the, those who are in need or make a commitment that when I get back home, 
I will initiate and start a project that will help others and will use my skill sets for their well-being. It's also an opportunity, the walk, to establish a connection with Imam Sahib al-Asli wa-Zaman, al-Mahdi al-Muntadar, ajjal Allahu ta'ala farajahu sharif It is likely that he's walking with the zuwar of his grandfather. He weeps like no other. He weeps drops of blood for the tragedy of Karbala. Therefore, he's with the mourners. He's with the Zaireen. He's with the Mashaya, the walkers towards the Blessed Shrine of Imam Hussain in Karbala. So it's a moment to establish wilaya and allegiance with the Holy Imam salam. At the same time, whilst we're walking, we remember those who are less fortunate. The orphans, for example. We will be in Iraq. There are four or five million orphans in Iraq. And we somehow seek to assist them, help them, alleviate their suffering in the name of Sayyida Ruqayya. Peace and blessings be upon her. The young daughter, Shahida, of Imam Hussein alayhi salam, who had to endure such suffering during the captives being taken from Karbala to Kufa and from Kufa to Sham, where eventually she attained martyrdom. And finally, amongst the many other recommendations and etiquettes that we should observe, we should be ambassadors for the walk. We should perhaps document what we go through. Keep a journal. Look at and observe how people treat each other and use it as inspiration, as motivation when you get back home. Tell people, tell your friends, non-Muslim colleagues anywhere and everywhere about the beauty and the excellence and the greatness of the walk to Karbala. Invite them to take part. Tell them of how it meant to you and how it transformed your life. And make a commitment to take part in the next Hussein, Let the world turn against me. Let the people resent me. All their looks won't affect me. If you took one look at me Many they came to ask for what people ask And I'm asking you for nothing I came to give my hand and to kiss your sand And to tell you thank you my king Labbayka ya Hussein Up to you we came Bayin al haram Calling out your name Labbayka ya Hussein Up to you we came Bayin al haram Calling out your name Hussein